What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Alex De Silva podcast. We hope you are well and having an amazing day, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. And welcome to another episode. Remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment on whatever platform you're listening. Now, let's get on with the show with your host, Alex De Silva. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are live. So grateful to be here today. And today I've got Betty Guadano. Is it Guadano? Did I say it correctly? Daniel. Pretty close. Oh, I've got Daniel. Almost, <laughs> almost. My apologies. But honestly, this episode I'm actually really excited about because I was just explaining to, to Betty that I got into the near-death experience world. Kind of just came across Betty's uh, video and just loved her story so i wanted to bring her in because as you guys know i love the spiritual element i love breath work i love the recovery element and betty seems to bring everything which is why i'm actually really excited about bag so betty thank you so much and welcome to the show thanks for having me i'm really excited for our conversation yes me too me too um often what i'd like to always start with is kind of you know give the floor to you you know, and just let you introduce yourself, but talk about that incredible near-death experience story, which I guess would then unfold into, you know, in, in, into everything else. So um, I want to open up the floor to you, you know, talk to me about and to the audience about what happened to you and what kind of led you to be here today. Yeah. Thank you so much for this conscious space. I think that it's so important to just have real, raw, authentic conversations about people's human experiences. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate you creating this space. And I'll give you the condensed version of the NDE so that we can talk about a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I trigger warning, let me just put that out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my life is kind of traumatizing. And uh, my life growing up was horrendously traumatizing. I just I experienced every kind of abuse that a person can. And I grew up in a family of addicts and addiction is a big part of my story as well. I'm a person in recovery. And I was taught at a very young age that you use drugs to cope with how chaotic your life is. Mm. And I thought that that was all very normal. I thought that all families did that. I thought mm. that all families drank and fought and bled and cried and screamed I didn't realize that my life was different until I started getting around other kids and having sleepovers and seeing that their family was functional and their mom made eggs in the morning and she would make them any way that you wanted. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was it was all totally bizarre and strange to me, not to say that my mother didn't feed me. She absolutely did. Mm -hmm. uh, but my life was, you know, just racked in trauma. And mm -hmm. I, I, experienced a very traumatic loss in early adulthood. My parents, who were both active addicts, made a decision that they had to end their suffering. They had to stop using drugs. And the only way that they knew how to do that was to die. And wow. so in 2007, my parents committed suicide with one another. Wow. And that death just really enveloped me in so much trauma. I can't remember most of my life before that because it was so traumatizing. But in the moment that my parents died, my addiction stepped in and mm. became my parent. Yes. And it spoke to me very loud and very tangibly. And it said, I will never leave you. I will never abandon you like they did. It's you and me together mm. forever. Mm. And so my addiction just went full force all the way, took over every aspect of my life. It, it came before every relationship, every job, every home, every pet, mm. every family relationship. At nothing was more important than my addiction. And it became my whole personality. I'm, it even branded me. I'm covered in tattoos of mm. liquor bottles and packs of cigarettes. Like yeah. my addiction <laughs> really, really was my main personality profile. For 22 years, I used drugs, heavily used wow. drugs. Mm -hmm. And uh, in 2019, I had a near-death-like experience due mm -hmm. to an overdose and I went to heaven <laughs> and wow. I was chilling with the creator and mm. God was like, girl, you got to stop using drugs. And I was mm. like, what? Nah, that, that's crazy. <laughs> and I wrote my experience off as drug induced psychosis. There's a lot that goes into the spiritual experience itself, but I was shown mm. my pre-birth planning. I experienced a spontaneous healing after my experience. 
I found my way into long-term recovery and I began manifesting my life. And I realized that my thoughts actually shape my reality. Mm -hmm. And I, ha I have proof of it, even being unconscious and unaware my, those thoughts were shaping my reality, the thoughts that I needed drugs to get through my experience, the thoughts that I had to do devious things to make money, you know, all of these thoughts, they really were shaping my reality. So today I have different thoughts. Today, my thoughts are that I'm an abundant individual. I'm surrounded by spiritual community. Good things come my way. And that really has been my reality mm -hmm. since then. And I had to do the underlying healing work. I've done mm -hmm. a lot, a lot of healing work and I continue to. I'm very active in my recovery. I belong to 12-step fellowship. I go to meetings every day. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, you know, like I have beautiful spiritual communities in my life as well. Mm -hmm. My yeah. life has really transformed 180 degrees. God, yeah, it really does, doesn't it? This is the thing with these experiences even when you just you know the what you've just described there you said chills because a, another addict understands that you know whether you're in recovery or whether you're going through it right now even if you, this is the thing I, I i always try to be a bit mindful these days in how i use my words because the 12 step program talks about, you know, addiction originally as it was alcohol and then it became drugs and then it spread out today. You can use this addictively, right? And you can use porn addictively. You can smoke addictively. You can shop addictively. You know, there are so many things now that you can do in order to, as you described, numb the pain, you know, and it's become so common for people to do that, especially you know, especially nowadays, it just seems like we're just seeing it more and more and more, this incredible chaos, you know, that's that's going on in the world. Um, I truly see it as, you know, as a, as a massive spiritual awakening, because I, I believe, and I'd love to get your take on this, that, you know, amongst the chaos, you know, the, the flowers bloom, you know, in, in the dirt is where things really, really happen. And I truly believe that this is that moment you know we're all in the dirt we're all in the trenches going through this what seems like absolute chaos and division and racism and you know are you vegan are you carnivore are you black are you white are you it, it and right it just seems to be everything at the moment and we're also seeing the pain you know that, that that's creating in the world you know and how people are coping with that, you know, is 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 their way of coping, which when we're in it is so hard to to see and understand. But it is that numbing. And in the moment, I think as I as I've realized, and I'd love to get your take on this, it just seems to be the best that we we can do at the time because we've got nothing else. Yeah, I I agree with what you're saying. I think that we are in an evolution right now. Mm. We are evolving. And that was part of my spiritual experience. The download was very loud and clear that mm. we are in the grit, the we are in the midst of the great awakening. Mm -hmm. We're transforming from a level of third dimensional thinking to fifth dimensional thinking. Mm -hmm. And what that means is we're going from an ego centered thought system to a spirit centered thought mm. system. Mm. And it's really, it's an individual journey. It doesn't yes. actually have anything to do with the world around us. The mm -hmm. world around us is the distraction. Like, mm -hmm. no, we can't be in the midst of spiritual awakening because look at the world but if you mm. don't focus on the world and you just focus on your inner world and mm. your your little reality mm. that's really where the transformation takes place mm. and i think that as a society again it's one more level of distraction we're not taught those tools and so mm -hmm. it's really up to us number one as individuals but also people that are in spiritual awareness that mm -hmm. have awoken to a certain degree it's up to us to tell people about those tools. Like, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that we have to go out and preach and teach and proselytize and shove the tools down people's throats. Mm -hmm. When people are ready, they'll find us and yes. we'll have the tools ready to share with them about it. Or maybe mm -hmm. they watch podcasts mm -hmm. and they find information on YouTube. So the more that we talk about it, you know, like for me, I'm in recovery, but that doesn't mean that I'm recovered, right? Mm -hmm. My addiction changes shape. So mm -hmm. I let go of drugs and alcohol, which was not easy. It was like very mm -hmm. challenging to yeah. do that because that was the only life that I had ever known. And mm -hmm. even though that life was terrible and uncomfortable and miserable, 
it was the only life that I had mm. ever known. So mm. I was very comfortable in my discomfort because I didn't mm. know that there was anything else. Mm. But then I let go of drugs and then a bunch of eating disorders manifest. Mm. Okay, now I have to deal with the eating disorders. Okay, so I do that. And then person obsession, which I've always been prone to, like fantasy mm. addiction, mm -hmm. like going into a world that doesn't exist and saying like, I'd rather spend time in this fantasy world inside my head than be mm. rooted in this reality because mm. this reality seems unstable to me. Mm. And it just, it, it just changes shape. It goes over and over. Right now I'm dealing with my addiction in the form of productivity addiction. Like right. I stacked my calendar full of 14 things to do in the day. Mm -hmm. And so it disconnects me from spirit because yeah. I'm so busy going and doing and going and doing that I have no pause in my day to sit and reflect like, wow, look at the beautiful home I've manifested. Wow, mm -hmm. look at the beautiful community I'm a part of because I'm mm -hmm. just so busy. So, mm -hmm. you know, my addiction definitely changes shape. And I think it does for a lot of us. And mm -hmm. some of the things that I do to combat the distraction or the that urge to like sedate and medicate myself with my phone or scrolling or doing or going, I can recenter myself in breath. You talked a little bit about breath work, mm -hmm. you know, and I also I leave post-its all over my house because <laughs> yeah. you are in the care of don't forget, you know, like just a little reminder, like, hey, guess yeah. what? God exists. Yeah. Spirits around. Don't worry. You know, yeah. and I, I just use whatever tools I can to try yeah. to bring myself back to that center. Yeah. And growing up in, in that environment, um, I'm going to make a very educated assumption here that spirituality religion was definitely not part of that whatsoever so what must have been your experience having this near-death experience and you know receiving the information that you did which i'd love for you to, to to kind of touch on and and share if there is especially with what we're going through now especially like nowadays um you know that has allowed you to shift perspective I was having a conversation with someone earlier and a conversation that keeps coming up a lot now is, you know, as soon as you mentioned mind, body, spirit or mind, body, soul, bless you. <laughs> There's definitely someone around you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the soul part, the God part, the Christ part, people switch off. And as we understand, you know, there's, there's this, as I am understanding it, you know, it's this almost, it feels like it's a purpose sort of um, plan to, to, to disconnect us from who we truly are. Um, and I'd love for you to kind of touch on, on these uh, sort of topics. Um, you know, I guess when you had the near death experience, going through that kind of spiritual part, connecting with the creator, what did you learn and what came through? And I guess, how can people in the now that may not have this experience start to kind of understand who they truly are? Yeah. You do not have to die to come into spiritual awakening. Mm. You can just make a conscious decision. Yes. Um, for me, the way that my life was going, it there was no other option. I was never going to get onto the path unless spirit dumped a bucket of spiritual bricks on my head. Mm. So, you know, uh, yeah, definitely growing up was not rooted in any sort of spirituality. Um, uh, you know, my family were atheists to a certain degree. I mean, my mother was Jewish, my father was Catholic, but they weren't practicing. Mm -hmm. Again, they were addicts. So mm -hmm. there's not a lot of space in life for spirituality when you're rooted in addiction, because mm -hmm. that's actually the opposite of it, right? Mm -hmm. And um, when I had my spiritual experience, I had no base of what spirituality was. I had never heard of spiritual awakening. I had never heard of a chakra. The information mm. that I was downloaded with about the great awakening, I had never heard any of those words before. Later, I found confirmation on the internet about it, which was such a great healing modality for me because I said, oh my God, I'm not crazy. Okay, other people are talking about this. this maybe this is real. Mm -hmm. But for me, going into my spiritual experience, I was you know, I was conscious for it. I was aware mm -hmm. of what was going on. And I just thought mm -hmm. that I was tripping really hard. I was like, whoa, I took too many drugs. This right. is crazy. I yeah. am so messed up. And 
you know, the first part of my experience was kind of a life review. Right. It wasn't just a life review for me, though. It was a life review for the whole collective. I mean, I felt experiences, whether they were past life experiences or mm -hmm. experiences in the collective itself or experiences from other members in my family line. Right. But I felt, you know, like the ache and despair of a child dying, which is something that's happened to other people in my family. Mm -hmm. Um, and obviously people in the collective itself, <clears throat> uh -huh. I felt the ache and pain of suicide. I felt my parents' suicide. Wow. You know, I felt the deepest, darkest um, pain and trauma. Mm -hmm. And it was mm -hmm. like, it was all going through my spirit all at once. Mm -hmm. And then I started to hear these voices and they were these masculine voices and they were guiding me into the light. And as I went into the light, I kind of felt like I decked on this spaceship. That's like the best way that I can describe it. Right. I landed somewhere mm -hmm. and it was this huge like circular room and it, you, there was a bright white light in the center and you mm -hmm. can call that light source or Christ or Krishna or Buddha, just so, some sort of higher entity, higher consciousness. Mm -hmm. And this light was downloading all of these spirits, myself being one of them with the mission of the great awakening and telling us that we were getting ready to jump to earth and mm -hmm. complete our mission. And everybody was super psyched and like really ready to go to earth and mm -hmm. you know, like liberate consciousness. I think it <laughs> might've been like a half not informed decision what we were actually <laughs> signing up for. And then after that, I was actually taken through the details of my particular pre-birth plan. So okay. how some people believe in an afterlife, I was shown that there's a life before life and in between life mm -hmm. where you go and you design your whole exp your whole earth experience wow so I, I likened it to a video game you know yeah. like you know that there's a route when you play a video game you know that there's an end there's a destination to it yes. right and you can design your character if it's a role player game and you can mm -hmm. pick all the physical attributes and the outfit that they wear and their stats what their mm -hmm. personality is like so it was kind of like a a building experience like that. And mm -hmm. so I had picked the family line that I was going to be born into mm -hmm. for specific reasons, because I knew mm -hmm. that there was a lot of trauma that needed to be healed inside the family line. Mm -hmm. I knew that if I was born to those particular parents, I would look a certain way that I would have, I would have like grounding experiences right off the bat. I knew that I was being born into a family line that had incest, molestation, rape, addiction, poverty, mm -hmm aspects of homelessness, mm -hmm. um, you know, like being a liar, manipulator, thief, those were all going to be part of my experience growing mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like my human can't understand how that mm -hmm. could evolve me as a spirit because mm -hmm. it doesn't compute, you mm -hmm. know, like, well, how can suffering be linked to spirituality at all? Mm -hmm. But today I live in unwavering faith. That mm -hmm. I know that my soul, my higher self, has mm -hmm. a much bigger plan going on that I don't have access to at any given moment. Mm -hmm. I had access to it in the moment of my spiritual experience, but I didn't get to take all of that back with me. Mm -hmm. So, but I just live by that faith. And I live yeah. that faith for other people too. You mm -hmm. know, like I know that people have designed their lives. Now mm -hmm. I don't go around screaming that in people's okay. faces, like, or high-fiving homeless people, like, yo, dude, cool mission. You know, <laughs> <Yeah. It> just like <laughs> I just allow, and I mm. hold that vision. I hold yeah. the vision that if I can heal, I know mm. that literally any living conscious being can heal because this yeah. was not part of my picture. Mm. And today it is part of my picture. Mm. So, you know, those were the really big takeaways for me. Another big takeaway for me was that there's no such thing as condemnation. The mm. only condemnation that exists is the condemnation that I put myself through. Right. And like when I, you know, I ended up in heaven and, you yeah. know, for the contrast of who I was before my experience, I was an atheist, an orphan to suicide. I was a homeless meth head prostitute strung out on heroin. Mm -hmm. I was a liar, a manipulator, a thief. I was a racist. I was a rapist. I was all of the things that you would think would condemn you to mm -hmm. the, the exact opposite of what mm -hmm. I had experienced. Mm -hmm. And that was the unconditional love an energy of, of source. Mm. And so that's another big takeaway for me. I could have come back to earth and decided that I was going to continue to live the life that I was living, mm. 
but the universe had something in store for me. And for me, living my life led by spiritual principles of honesty, open-mindedness, willingness, brotherly love, unconditional love, tolerance, patience, those things feel better. You know, the way that I live my life today, my life is a life of service. And that's the high that I was chasing my whole life Mm -hmm. was this feeling that I get just by being of service to myself, other Mm -hmm. people, people Mm -hmm. in recovery, people Mm -hmm. on the spiritual path that are looking for integration tools. Mm -hmm. It's really been such an incredible shift. Yeah. 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 It's incredible, isn't it? It, And do you know, one of the things I want to touch on when you talked about as you look at your your blueprint, you know, before you come here, you you know, you create that design. I've had some of these very similar experiences um, as well. And one of the things that was shown to me in one of my experiences was that the challenges aren't here to to condemn you. They're not here to punish you. You know, they're here to to teach you because it's you know, like we were saying, it's, it's through the darkness that light is created. You know, it's through the tough times that, you know, that we can really learn. It, the, the, these three words, I never forget them. Learn, grow and develop. That's something that was looped into my head. I was going through a, a very powerful spiritual experience and I kept hearing, you're here to learn, grow and develop, learn, grow and develop. And I remember asking the question is like, why, why, what's the purpose? That's one of the things I always asked when I was in addiction and I tried to commit suicide and I didn't want to be here and I was drinking myself to death and I was using to death. And like you, I was using, abusing porn, you name it, you know, and just going through the cycles that we do, just caring about nobody else apart from us. And it didn't matter what destruction we left behind. But when there was those quiet times when we were going through that calm down, you know, in the mind, the dark part of, you know, of, of the brain um, starts to kind of berate. And I'm like, why am I here? This sucks. This is. And then when you get through that part and you start to realize and understand why it's to learn, to grow, to develop, you know, and the, 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 the bigger picture of that is it's just an infinite place that we can, we can just grow. And we can knowledge share, you know, and we can help others. And, and it's this vastness of um, creation. And I was like, yeah, but what's the purpose to it? Like, what's the actual purpose? It's like, because we can. Because we can, you know. And it allows us to, you know, just to, especially in this human experience is one of the things that I've discovered. And I'd love for you to touch on this. You know, manifestation in spirit, I think you touched on it briefly, happens like this. You know, when I'm when I'm doing breath work or I'm in a ceremony or, you know, like you can literally think of something and everything starts to happen. But here, what I was shown is you can do exactly the same thing. But because this planet, the energy here is denser, it just takes that little bit of time. So you just need that little bit of faith, you know. And, and you talked about faith and just one step at a time, you know, we say in recovery one day at a time, you know, just keep it in a moment, have faith. Um, how has kind of life, how has that helped you? You know, when, when you received that, that message and you got that clarity, was it a spontaneous decision for you to go, I need to get my shit together? Or did you go as some addicts do, I'm going to, I'm going to research a little bit more. Yeah. uh, Thank you for that, that contribution. And, you know, I just want, I want to touch on one thing you said before you said like, you know, that victim mentality, why Mm. me, why me, why Mm. me? And I, I started to hear the why me, I started to hear an answer after a while. And it was because, because you can, because you're strong enough. Mm. Why do all these things happen to you? Because this is what you wanted. You Mm. wanted to do this and you're strong Mm. enough to do it. So if you're a person who's going through something that's really intense whether it's sickness or grief or addiction, it's, you know, like you're going through it because you can, because you're strong enough to. I really feel like the strongest souls sign up for these really challenging missions. And um, I just wanted to throw that out there. But for me, you know, coming in, making a decision to change my whole life. No, I did not come willingly. (laughs) Even though I had this really profound spiritual experience, like I said, I just thought that it was drug induced psychosis. I just Mm. thought like, damn, I took too much. 
Mm. I'm never going to be that high ever again. Yeah. And that's it. And the only thing that gave me confirmation that I actually had to go on to a different path and that my experience was real was that I had all of these divine signs and synchronicity started started to take place in my life. Mm-hmm. One of the ones that really sticks out is that all of my dealers all decided to change their lives and stop selling drugs at the exact same moment. I'm talking about 10 men that did not know each other. These were all guys from wow. like different parts of the city. They were like not connected in any way. And I would call up each of them one after the other. And they all had a similar story. Like, Hey, I'm out of the game. I found Jesus. I want to be a good dad. I'm like, what is going on? This is crazy. So then I had no way to get what I needed. And Mm -hmm. I I had a physical dependency to heroin. And so, you know, like going through opiate withdrawal, I would rather die. And that's where I was in the moment. I was so sick. I was on day three of withdrawal. And I knew exactly what my parents had gone through in that Mm. moment. I mean, I had gone through withdrawal tons of times, but Uh this time was like the end. Yeah. And I would just, I had like some kind of mental or spiritual suicide happen where I was like, I realized I was so sick that I couldn't even get out of bed to figure out a way to kill myself Mm. because I was that sick. Mm. And I heard a voice and it told me that I could request what I wanted fixed. And mm-hmm. I was in the throes of desperation. So I was mm-hmm. like, okay, strange boys, please heal me. I don't want to be sick right now. Mm-hmm. And um, they told me to lay back and to count backwards from 10. And as I did, these two little men appeared in my mind's eye. I still see them every time I tell this story. And they're mm-hmm. like, we're here. We're still here. <laughs> um, and they were wearing these white lab coats. They had these little lawn mowers in front of them. And they started to plow out every crevice of my mind. And as they walked through the crevices of my mind, I felt these intense hot tingles until my whole head was lit up. And then there was this bright white flash. And in that moment, I was spontaneously healed out of day three of heroin withdrawal. Moments before I was sick all over myself, welcoming death. It felt like my bones were made of fire, like my skin was made of broken glass just writhing in pain. And then all of a sudden I was completely well and healed and fine. And so that was my true moment of belief and surrender. And I threw myself on the floor and I was crying out to the divine. How could this be happening to me? I don't believe in this. I don't believe in you. I don't believe in any of this. Why is this happening? How could this be happening? You could not have picked a more unworthy subject to bestow this Mm -hmm. kind of grace on. And then, you know, after that experience, I obviously thought I was the second coming of Christ. I was like, hello, Jesus is back. I'm here. And I was I was out uh, on the New York City subway system, like laying hands on homeless drug addicts. And I was like, I have the power to heal. This is amazing. <laughs> and it was so crazy and so chaotic. And I was sitting on a train and there was nobody on it, which is Mm. bizarre in New York City to have nobody on in an entire subway car. Yeah. And this man came in as the doors opened at this stop and he walked in and he sat directly across from me, even though the whole train car was empty. Mm. And around his neck was this was a 12 step fellowship Mm. pendant. Mm. And I just, you know, I knew that it was a sign. I heard a voice in my head. It said, this is it. This is your path. Follow Mm. him to a meeting. And I asked this stranger if he was going to a meeting and Mm -hmm. he just so happened to be, and I followed him. And that was the beginning of my recovery journey. And, um, yeah, you know, just beautiful signs, confirmation from the universe without Mm -hmm. me even putting in any legwork, you know, now Mm -hmm. I manifest signs and symbols for myself to give me confirmation. But at that point in my journey, it was so abundantly clear that Mm -hmm. I had to get onto a different path. I still didn't want to. Yeah. I mean, I followed instructions. Mm -hmm. I just kept going to meetings and then I found myself in a long-term rehab, but I really did not want to do this. I did Mm -hmm. not want to let go of drugs because drugs were my higher power. Drugs were my God. They were my best friend. They were my parent. They were my husband. They were my lover. They were my whole life, my whole personality. And so then I was just naked essentially with Mm -hmm. no, no idea of who I am without this aspect of myself. Mm -hmm. And it was, um, a really big thought to think that I had to design a whole new person. But then one Mm. day I just switched the thought and I said, wow, I get to design Mm. me. 
This is yeah. actually really cool. Yeah. It's not some like big daunting project. It's an amazing, a, it's a, an amazing opportunity to mm. design the most authentic version of myself. I get to decide who I am. Mm. So yeah, I, I changed that thought and my whole life exploded. Yeah. And isn't it powerful? And I, and I, and I want you to just further go into this. You, you know, you mentioned that mindset a number of times and I've been going through my own challenges which i know today you know it's one of these things like i know i'm okay i chose this and um but the 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 interesting part about it is when you choose something it's almost like fuck's sake could i have chosen something different <laughs> like this really this one sucks in a human body it sucks and you know, four months ago, I, I don't know if you've heard of the term. It's uh, it's uh, it's called quarter equina syndrome. It's a very rare spinal condition that um, the lower disc herniates. So the lower part of the spine, you have the the quarter equina nerves. So anyway, it's my disc herniated inwards, which is that's where it's rare because usually it comes outwards. So it herniates inwards and it traps the nerves. Over time, I started to become paralyzed. Started to get sciatica, then my foot, then my leg, then my groin, then my other leg. And all of a sudden, I'm com from the waist down, completely paralyzed. Thank God. Um, I had the operation. They did the decompression. Everything was okay. And one of the things that popped into, into my head, just I was, I was waiting to go into theater. And there was a message that came through and went, you're walking out of here stronger than you came in. And I, I just went, okay, yeah, that's me. And there was nothing on the, I woke up two days before I'm walking around with my kids. I'm playing around, I'm training, I'm doing the things that going to meetings, doing all the things I need to do. I wake up on a Wednesday morning, 25th of September, 23. And I look down at my legs and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I'm paralyzed. Like my, my legs have gone numb. Everything's gone numb. And it went, trust the process. I went, okay. And it was, and I wanted to touch on this, the power of the mind, you know, because I've been thrown out of quarter requiner support groups because of my mindset, because over the four months I went from being paralyzed to now I'm on crutches at the minute, you know, but I'm walking, I'm walking on crutches. I go to the gym, I'm doing the exercises I need to do, but I had that exact same faith the exact same belief. I can't explain it. I don't know how, but there was just something inside me that, you know, when you just get such confidence, the doctor said to me, look, you know, you've got to, you know, potentially you might not walk, you know, or your foot might not recover. And I went, no, I'm recovering 110%. And they'd look at me like I'm mad. The physio said to me the same thing a number of times. I don't know whether you might have the answer for this or whether it's something that you've kind of experienced, but what is it about that mindset that when we set that, you know, you make that decision, there is nothing on the planet. And I say it now, there is nothing on planet Earth. My right foot is woken up. My muscles are rebuilding. My left foot still a little bit. It's not moving as much. But as soon as I say my left foot, the, the nerves on my left foot goes like that. I get this, this like little, uh, little tingle that goes through my feet. You cannot tell me otherwise. I think that that mindset is so important. I, you know, I also, I, and, and that's a miracle, you know, and, mm. and we are entitled to miracles. It yes. is our birthright. The world makes us forget. We go through this veil of forgetfulness. We forget all about our spiritual being. But we are spiritual beings living a temporary human experience. Now, some of us have signed up for health and wellness challenges mm -hmm. as part of our soul contract. Mm -hmm. um, and I really think that even if the positive mindset doesn't work and you don't heal in the way that you like would like to, the fact that you're walking by faith makes your life abundantly better. Mm -hmm. I know this healer, his name is Jerome Braggs. And He's, he healed himself out of um, end stage renal failure, end stage AIDS in the 90s. Wow. And I mean, incredible, incredible testimony of a person with, a, you know, a spiritually transformative experience. 
and he heals, you know, like he's a healer and he, and he works with people and he talks about how he takes people through the process of self-love. And he says, even if the person doesn't heal their cancer, they love themselves so much after the process that it doesn't even matter. Mm. It doesn't matter because they've developed this super strong foundation mm. in faith. Mm. You have that connection to the divine. And so it doesn't matter what happens in your physical body. Mm. You know, and I, I think that there's there's something there for sure. Mm. You know, another thing is that we, we also have to know our audience, right? So if you're in a support group for people that are dealing with some sort of chronic illness or something that's really debilitating, it's not necessarily up to us to be like, guys, have faith, we picked this, mm. you know, because the spiritual mm. beliefs can be weaponized. And I feel like yeah. when we're really enthusiastic about them and we feel this sense of urgency, that's not spirit. That's mm. self-righteousness. Mm. That's like, hey, look at me, look at me. Mm. Um, and that took me a long time. I, I got clean in a long-term therapeutic community, a long-term rehab in Brooklyn where I live. So I'm mm -hmm. in a, I'm trapped in a house essentially mm -hmm. with 25 other women, which despite what you think is not sexy pajama parties and pillow fights. Okay. It's hardcore. <laughs> and you know, I'm in there like guys, source, the universe, the sun, the moon, the stars. And they're like, girl, shut up. <laughs> like yeah. nobody wants to hear you. And I'm like, but you guys need to know. And you know, they, they didn't, they, I mean, yeah. they didn't, they just didn't mm -hmm. need to know because mm -hmm. it wasn't for them at that time. Mm -hmm. And I'm still friends with some of them and, and now they get it. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like, I didn't understand when I was there. Cause I was too in the, in the mud of yeah. the experience. But now mm -hmm. that I've come out, and I've had some clarity and some space and I actually have a connection with my higher power. I know what you were talking about. Mm. And so, you know, I think that there, there's some there's some temperance, there's some balance between mm -hmm. those two things. But I do think that changing your thoughts will change your reality. Mm -hmm. If you decide, like, I'm a person who's healing I find other people who are healing. And those yeah. are the people that you can have those conversations with. Some people mm -hmm. are very content being stuck in victim mentality or like mm -hmm. staying in the struggle. And they haven't had that opportunity to overcome or overturn that thought process. Mm -hmm. And I and I think that it's just about us holding that vision in our mind, right? Mm -hmm. So when we meet resistance around some of our spiritual beliefs like for instance my partner my boyfriend he's an atheist he doesn't know anything that i'm talking about ever and and that's okay because he yeah. doesn't have to get it you know yeah. i can hold the vision that one day maybe he'll have a spiritual awakening and he'll be like oh my god please tell me about pre-birth yeah. planning and star seeds i want to know everything <laughs> I'll hold that vision for him because yeah. somebody must have held that vision for me, yeah. whether it was my spirit team or somebody praying me into recovery when yeah. we do the serenity prayer and meetings, yeah. somebody was holding a vision of me healing. And yeah. I, and I truly believe that that's what, you know, made that happen for me. Yeah. And yeah, I think that having a positive mindset is so important. And I also think it's important to know that we don't have to push that mindset on anybody else. Mm -hmm. As long as we just focus on our own little individual journey, we we walk as testimonies. Like there's mm -hmm. a guy in The Secret, uh, the Miracle Man, this man, yeah. he died, like he died essentially in a plane mm -hmm. crash. 90% mm -hmm. of his body covered in third degree burns. I told yeah. him he would never walk again. He would die within six months. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I'm not. I'm not dying. I'm not mm. done. And that dude is a motivational speaker. Yeah. And he, you know, goes mm. around and, and talks about how his thoughts changed his reality. He said, mm. I'm going to walk by this date. And he set a time and he carried it out. And, you know, the law of attraction is always working in our favor, but we yeah. have to keep those thoughts elevated in order yeah. to call in that experience. And like you said, there's a little bit of a time lapse in between spirit mm -hmm. world and here. So yeah. patience, tolerance, acceptance, those spiritual principles are really important. Those muscles to build yeah. those muscles, you know, like you can't just yeah. say, okay, I'm a patient person. No, it's like going to the gym. You got to work out a little bit each day yeah, yeah. and exercise that patience. Yeah. I call it being actively patient. Yes being actively oh, yeah. patient yeah it's one of the things that i've had to to, to definitely learn i like things yeah. i think it's, it's the sometimes it's the little disconnect between spirit the ego and the human body where i like i, I want to manifest this now <laughs> you know and i want things to happen now and there are a lot of things that happened for us that teaches and this is what i always like to to share with people is look at the challenges 
like look for those challenging times because if you really allow yourself to to be open to them they're trying to teach you something so powerful you know and in the moment it was just a moment when i was in hospital my wife said to me oh you know we're such good people you know you're doing such beautiful work like why is this happening to us and i went no baby i said you know as well as i do i said this has happened for us i said and there's a beautiful reason why this has happened for both of us because you know, we're a partnership, you know, we've got two children, I've got two older ones from a previous relationship, and we've always been a strong partnership, all of us together. And when I wasn't at home, she had to look after two young ones, my daughter's five, my son's two, she's got a full time career. And, you know, it was tough, you know, and for me not being with my family being on a hospital bed, you know, like, not being able to move, but in time, four months down the line now where we're able to look at things and go, wow, okay, now it's making sense. You know, our marriage at some point could have been over. You know, there were times she received, she did a reading with someone uh, about a week or so ago. And the lady mentioned, by the way, there's a message from spirit that they're just saying it's, you know, that there could be a, a potential separation, you know, in the next few months. And then she went on and said something else. And my wife, Lucy, shared everything with me. And I was like, okay, so what do we do about it? And that's what we said. What do we do about it? Because I don't, I don't, I never think about stuff like that. Do you? She went, no. I said, okay, so there's a sign there. There's a message for us to ensure that we don't get comfortable somewhere down the line and we do everything that we need to do. But I think as, as you mentioned, faith, that word faith is such a, is such an underrated word and we talk about it in you know in, in recovery trust in the process you know trust the process go through the steps do the work trust god clean house help others trust that process right why is it so hard for people to to, to trust this process especially nowadays where as we're seeing you know, with all the chaos, everything that's happening as you know, like the veil is kind of almost just, you know, coming down, so to speak. So there's so much that's that's coming out, which some some people, maybe some of us, you know, are kind of going, yeah, I always knew this. It kind of makes sense. But in the background, I'm going, OK, God, what do I need to do to be able to serve? Because I know we're now moving into a heart center, love, light, service to others. What can I do? Show me how I can be of service. Do this podcast, you know, help other people, get this message out, you know, connect with people like yourselves. What can we do? You know, how can we, um, I guess, help people? Because in, in, in times now, especially, it's, I think before you could, as you mentioned about with, with your partner, the right conversation at the right time could spark a, Oh, that's interesting. I never thought about it that way. Whereas now it's you say a certain word, faith, God, Christ. <clears throat> people just shut down. Some people start screaming in your face. Yeah, you know, for one, I definitely I well, I want to say something about um what you shared about your wife's reading. So I I I Pre-birth planning, I have a deep knowing in pre-birth planning. I know that pre-birth planning exists. You don't have to know it. You can adopt it as a belief and it'll help mm -hmm. if it will help you get through some of the trauma in your life. Because for me, even if it wasn't part of my spiritual experience and I just happened upon this information, I would adopt this as a belief. Because yeah. otherwise, there's just like some cruel creator burning me with a magnifying glass from up above and like torturing me. So and that's what a lot of people I believe, right? Right. And I just, I take autonomy. I say, Hey, I, I picked this. I, mm. I mean, like, I know I did, but mm. you don't have to know it. You can mm. just decide to oh, believe. Yeah, I'm the same. It. But also the thing about pre-birth planning is that it's not rigid. So like how your wife had this reading from this woman and she said, well, there could be a separation. Well, there could be anything. Well, you could win a million dollars. There could be anything. We live in a multiverse. So there's a million different fractured timelines that we can go down. So and I don't believe that anybody comes into form, especially not in this time right now, where mm -hmm. we're in the midst of transmuting so much negative energy, so much dark into light. 
that nobody comes in here just to have a life of suffering. Like it's not, it's not possible. It's completely mm-hmm. impossible. Yeah. And so if you feel like you're stuck in a rut of suffering, please reach out for support. It's through other people that we mm-hmm. heal. Mm-hmm. You know, like we came here in tribes in soul tribes, mm-hmm. the beginning of time, we only survived in tribes and we've lost mm-hmm. that throughout humanity. Mm-hmm. And we've become into this societal construct of hyper independence like oh i'm independent i can do everything on my own no you're not meant to do anything on your own in fact your higher power or your spirit team your higher self whatever language you want to use the universe is constantly supporting you so you're definitely not on your own and if it doesn't feel like you're being supported you know like using other people as those tools can really help mm-hmm. um and, you know so when i think about like what can i do Hmm. At first, I thought that I had to go out and preach and right. like tell everybody hmm. like the good news, yeah. you know, and that that dissipated because mm-hmm. I realized that it was rooted in a sense of urgency and urgency mm-hmm. is not spirit. Spirit right. is calm and mm-hmm. cool and collected. Mm-hmm. And so today I just am a bright light and my light impacts the people around me without me doing anything. Mm. And I know it seems kind of passive, like, Mm. oh, she's not doing anything. I mean, I do things. I'm Mm. of service constantly. I have a private coaching business where people that are meant for me find their way to me and we assist each other on the journey of awakening or integration or the journey of recovery. But I know that right now, because my light is shining brightly, because we're having this conscious conversation and we're connecting, that my neighbor in the apartment next to me, I bet she's feeling the frequency Mm. because it's so raised. I don't Mm. need proof. I don't need to go ask her like, hey, are you feeling tingly in your heart (laughs) chakra? I can just trust (laughs) that my light is impacting the Mm. the grid, the matrix grid around Mm -hmm. me. And I know that it's creating, creating light. So I would love to be able to like go out and crusade and have some sort of, you know, uh, mission like that. But I just, for for right now, I don't feel that it's that way. I feel like it's creating conscious space, Uh having conversations, creating the new normal, making the extraordinary ordinary. We Uh all have these spiritual experiences and, you know, people do get really creeped out by the word Christ or faith or God. People like cringe and mm. completely close off. I love that you said that. So, you know, I always uh, tell clients, you have to have a foundation in faith. If you don't like the word faith, use service, use spirit, use universe. You have to have a foundation in something. Otherwise, mm. you're walking on quicksand. Yeah. You want to accomplish all these things. You want to heal. You want to grow. You want to evolve. You want a boyfriend. You want a house. You want a career. You have no foundation. You're just walking Mm. on quicksand and you're just falling into the earth. Mm. So you got to have a foundation in something. And my my tip is always find a moment where your intuition served you. Find a moment in your life. Just it could be a small, tiny, nothing moment, you know, Mm. like, oh, I decided to turn left instead of right. And I avoided a car accident or Mm. I walked down the street. I don't usually go down and I saw an old friend or, you know, I Mm. ate five donuts and I didn't gain a pound. That's got to be spirit helping me out, you know? (laughs) Um, Like if you can find that one moment and then cultivate that into a faith statement Mm. and use that as like a guiding post back. So like Mm. when you start to travel off into the chaos or the dysfunction of the world, you can just recenter yourself in that one moment of intuition that really helped you. Oh, I saw a feather. Oh, I saw 11, 11 on the clock. Mm. Uh, a butterfly flew right past my face. Mm. You can make your own miracles. You're the designer of your mm. universe. You know, mm. like find something that feels miraculous and hold it, hold mm. that vision of it. That's how I recenter myself all the time is just mm. by calling on those little miracle moments. Yeah, Because, you know, I forget all the time, too. I'm in a constant state of forgetting, even with my profound experiences and talking about them constantly. Like, we're going to end our conversation and I'm going to go about doing my laundry and washing my dishes and I'm going to (laughs) forget that God exists, you know? (laughs) Yeah. But it's so powerful, isn't it? This this experience, I was having um, a conversation with, I've had these conversations a number of times and we get into the one that, that, um, really triggers people and we're seeing this stuff coming out at the moment around children and just around the whole pedophilia and it's 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 all 
you know, that's kind of where I draw boundaries. You know, I think when adults want to make decisions and you want to do what you want to do, I'm kind of like, look, knock yourself out. You know, I've been an addict. I've done all sorts of crazy things. You know, I've lived, a, you know, as I see it now, I've lived a very colorful life, which I'm very proud of. Um, you know, I, I've done a lot of healing. I've done a lot of forgiveness. I've forgiven myself, most importantly, as well. I've done a lot of that. And um, especially as you continue to learn, you know, when you, when you mentioned about when you have your life review, when I saw your story and I've kind of seen a few others, a few things started to go through my mind, you know, because we do have behaviors, things that we do. And I've realized I was like, okay, this is a time for forgiveness. Forgive yourself for that. Don't carry that stuff. I'm showing you this so you can let go of it. And um, one of the things that, that come up sometimes is, well, you know, if your God was so loving and, you know, I've had, I've had a, a very profound experience where I went straight to source, went straight to source. I was going through a healing journey, was working with a shaman and I didn't even have time to go. Oh my God. I literally just left and um, hit source and went, Oh, and became everything and nothing. And it was just this, I, and you know this because you experience experiences, there is no human word that can describe it. I try to use the unconditional love word, but it just doesn't do it justice. Trust me when I say this, and one day you will experience it, but unconditional love doesn't do its justice. So people often then say to me, especially those who kind of challenge faith or Christ, you know, and anybody that doesn't, understand it or believe it we'll go well you know if your god was so good why are there so many wars now you know if your god was so great why is there pedophilia and i try to explain i think as you did that we choose this path you know we are the ones that choose this path and every single person that we connect is there is a purpose to that we're all exchanging we're all teaching each other something whether it's an hour whether it's a day a week 10 years 20 years doesn't matter we're we're all interconnected we're all connected as one but as we're having individual experiences we've had an agreement to uh to to, to share knowledge this is how we teach each other and people then go on further to say well how is this fair you know surely you know killing a child or you know murdering someone blah 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 and what I try to explain sometimes, and I'd love to get your opinion on this, and this was hard for me, Betty, to, to when I was doing that healing work, and you have to go, and I went so deep within. It's almost like when you have that ego death where you are, you literally get stripped to nothing. I got stripped to nothing. And, and um, I remember this message, this beautiful voice, the same source just said to me, it's okay. There is no right. There is no wrong. These are just experiences. You you understand that. And I know that when you come back into, into the form, into the human form, that's the toughest challenge when you're having a conversation, when you're seeing something happening, especially with me. I've always, ever since I was there, I've always been so positive and so loving, very caring. And even now when we're just talking about you want to heal the world, Oh, I've had experiences. I've come out of a breathwork session after like three hours, and I'm like, oh my God, I can hear my hands are my hands are buzzing. People are telling me that I'm a healer and I just want to go and heal the world. And all of a sudden I'm like, touch me and I'm gonna suck a punch you. <laughs> like, stay the hell away from me, crazy man. But that's the it's the beauty of being a human being, but it's the toughest part of healing, being a human being is when you get the full clarity, the bigger picture of everything that no one ever truly gets hurt. No one ever truly suffers. We choose to have these experiences for the sole purpose of learning. And, and that's the toughest part, I think, sometimes, is trying to bring clarity to that and to try to make sense of it. Does that kind of makes sense to you i'm trying to sort of explain it to kind of make sense of it but yeah definitely. Do justice. You know, i you know so i've come to a point now where when when people try to argue creation to me or argue the, the universe the way that i see the universe to mm. me i i give them their space right like people are angry why do mm. these things exist why do we have war why do we have all these things so one of the main spiritual tools that I use in my integration process is this beautiful book right here, A Course in Miracles. 
And uh, it's just a little bit of light reading. Just yeah. saying, it's like an 1800 page book. Um, <laughs> and this is a channeled message from Jesus. Uh -huh. And it's channeled through the mind of a militant atheist, a uh -huh. psychotherapist in the mm. 1970s. Uh, that she, And she worked at Columbia University. And this book is obviously not written by a human because it's like very challenging to understand. Oh. I have a beautiful study group that I, that I study this book with. And it's, as you were talking, I opened up the book to a random page just oh. because in a course in miracles, it teaches that we live inside of a dream that oh. this is an illusion. And this oh. illusion was sparked from one tiny mad idea. Oh. Now you can go, you can go back to the story of creation if you want, and you can, um, compare that tiny mad idea to the eating of the apple in the garden, uh -huh. right? That we wanted all of the knowledge. Uh -huh. And so that's the tiny mad idea is that we wanted to have this experience in A Course in Miracles. It says that God doesn't even know that we're here, that uh -huh. God loves us so much that God was like, go do whatever you want to do. Uh -huh. And this is what happened. This is what uh -huh. we wanted to do, uh -huh. that our thoughts created this reality. And yeah, uh -huh. it's gotten a little out of control. You know, it's, it's spiraled into some crazy stuff, yeah. but, but everything is pockets, mm -hmm. you know? So like for me, I don't watch the news because I have no Same. business watching the news. Mm -hmm. I don't need to consume myself with what's going on in the illusion. Mm -hmm. I, I hear some people say like, oh, I just skim the newspaper to stay current. I don't need to stay current. I, and you know what? My life functions just fine, not knowing. Mm -hmm. And if something is really big and it's going to affect my personal universe, that information will find its way to me. Yes. That's one tool that I use to like deter myself from the madness. But I opened up the book to a random page to see what the course wanted to say, as you were talking about this thing that impacts so many people. Mm. And the, I opened it up to lesson 33 and it says, there is another way of looking at the world. And so I have to keep that in mind when I see gross injustice. And I mean, of course it exists. Mm. And I've experienced some of it myself yeah. in my own life, but mm -hmm. there is another way of looking at this. And for me, using the tool of spiritual autonomy gives me freedom in my experience. So like, you know, I get that a lot when people hear my story, because I, I do, you know, talk about the, the pre-birth plan and the knowing that we design our lives. Well, what about Hitler? Hitler designed his life. Yeah, Hitler did design his life. And and Hitler got to go back to heaven too. Mm -hmm. And that's like not an easy thing to say, right? But Hitler also had to experience a life review where I'm sure he kept himself in condemnation for a long, long time. But it's mm -hmm. him. Like it's his spirit on its own mm -hmm. journey. And, you know, like when children sign up for... Um, you know, like a short life, like to mm -hmm. have a challenge of health and wellness and to die at a young age. Mm -hmm. Of course, we can't understand what is the spiritual significance of that because mm -hmm. we're rooted in our human. We can't see it from a spiritual perspective because it seems unjust and unfair, mm -hmm. but we don't know, you know, like the parents and the child came into a contract with each other because that that's definitely going to evolve the parents in a way that we can't even comprehend. Mm -hmm. And there's a great book that I'll reference as a resource that really helped me with the understanding as well, not just from my spiritual experience, but for me, it was a great integration tool. Robert Schwartz has mm -hmm. a book called Your Soul's Gift. This is mm -hmm. his second book. And it specifically talks about major life challenges like mm -hmm. suicide, rape, incest, miscarriage, abortion, and it talks about the soul planning process for those really adverse conditions. Mm. And he has another great book called Your Soul's Plan. And um, again, just like uh, amazing, amazing. Uh, he He's a, a past life regression therapist, and he was right. taking people in between lives and talking mm -hmm. to a medium and talking to their souls and finding out about the, the pre-birth planning process. Michael Newton as well, great spiritual godfather of pre-birth planning research. And these books really helped me with the mm. deeper understanding of pre-birth planning. Mm. So, you know, it doesn't have to be something that you adopt as a belief or a knowing mm. or anything. For me, it's one of my greatest tools to deal with the insanity of the illusion. Like, mm. why does this happen? Eh, mm. Because we wanted it to happen. But yeah. in heaven, it's totally boring. Hello, we only feel one thing for all of <laughs> yeah. eternity. Unconditional <laughs> love and bliss. Like, news. Send me down here to the fire of earth. I That's want it. to experience. And That's it's it. all so quick.
It's yeah. so like, you know, you had an instant where you were back with source. Mm. That's what this is. When yeah. we go back to source, it's like this life didn't even happen. It's like yeah. nothing. You don't get to yeah. take anything with you. No. It's so fast. It's mm. a, this is a dream. Yeah. And just like how when we have a sleeping dream at night and we can mm. only grab three seconds of it in the morning, mm. it's the same thing when we go back to eternity too. Yeah. So we don't have to get too attached to the yeah. emotions and we're just... We're playing a part here. We're actors. Yeah. You don't need to be a method actor. You can just be no. a regular actor. That's read it. your lines, get through the script, that's go it. to the next page, and I'd be done with the scene. Yeah, that's it. Just be you. Be you. But you know what? Touch on that for me a little bit more because I find that so fascinating. Um, and for me, trust me, like to understand that and to believe. And it's like, what do you mean? Like, this is an illusion. And honestly, the fear and the ego, especially grabs on to this being real what do you mean of course i'm real look at me but as the ego dissolves and you start to realize i am no different than this hoodie i am no different than this hoodie and i explain it to people when i when i'm doing healing work with you know when when people want to hold on to resentment or they want to hold on to anger and to fear you know i'm going to take this to the grave and i'm like why you're not even taking your body to the grave. Why are you holding on to something that's just going to cause you pain? Let go. Do the forgiveness. Trust the process. Allow yourself to go through this healing journey so you can find who you truly are. And it, it, it's it's so fascinating that we've been, but I guess that's the beauty of the process, isn't it? Where we, you know, we get, we, we're birthed into this, you know, into, into this existence. We choose this life and all of a sudden, even though when life sucks, when you wake up to it, you kind of go, oh, it can't really suck because I know it's temporary anyway. Like this is all going to go one day. And I try to explain to, to people, even my children, my two oldest ones, who's 20, 26, almost 19, and then I've got a five and a two. I explain to the two older ones, especially now, because it's that transgenerational trauma, you know, how we heal each other. And I was talking to my son a few days ago. He was helping me with the podcast. And I said to him, listen, you're already 10 years ahead of me. He hasn't he hasn't drunk for almost a year. He's going to be a year clean and sober by his own personal choice. Incredible. Honestly, incredible. I'm so proud of him. He's he's a he's an amazing young man. And we've got a picture of him and I just over there. And I sort of explain to him, sometimes he gets worried, he gets caught up in things. And I say to him, Brandon, I say it to, to all my children, and even when I'm working with others, it's like, just, just chill, honestly. Even my wife, you know, being a woman, being a mother, you know, wanting to do well. We all been put on this planet into this system that keeps us wanting to strive. You've got to strive. You've got to succeed. You've got to make money. You've got to do this. And all of a sudden I realize I've kind of gone, Why? Why, why, why do we have to do that? Like, what, what's the, what's the purpose? Who, who am I benefiting? And that's something for me, which I struggled with. I like to do it, don't get me wrong. But over the years, especially through recovery, and as more and more I started to fall into myself, I've gone, I actually don't want to do that stuff. It doesn't align with me anymore. I want to share knowledge. I want to talk to people. I want to be able to heal somebody. I want to be able to help or maybe coach to do something. That's what really aligns with me. And speak to me on 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 that for you, like your your sort of journey and how can people again slowly come to terms with the fact that we don't need to worry. Mm. Like it's okay. Like it doesn't and I sometimes like I and I do it in private, but I say it here openly because it's an open space. There are times when I speak to my wife, you know, and I burst into tears because I see the suffering, I see the pain. And, you know, sometimes when you just want to go, you know, like, you know, like yeah. it's Thanos, you just want to do that and just go, you know, you just want to shake someone and go, oh, I just want you to see what I see in you. Because that's one of the things I've had ever since I was a child. I see, I've always been able to see the beauty in people. And that's something for me, Betty, took me a long time. Even now, sometimes like I'll have days where I'll, I'll, I'll kind of struggle and share with, with my wife. And I'm like, I just, my mind is, you know, it, it, it's tough sometimes to see yeah. these things happening. Even when you know I it's an illusion. Yes, yes. You know, I have a friend who always teases me and like, she's 
she's a mom to two, two young children. And, you know, like she'll call me and vent about her day and then she'll be like, but none of it's real. Right, Betty. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> because that's <laughs> usually my response. I'm like, don't forget, don't forget that we're inside of an illusion. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that we just like write everything off and don't care about things, mm -hmm. right? Like we're here to have the experience mm -hmm. of the illusion. I mm -hmm. truly believe that we came here to do this. So, you know, I think that the uh, using the world, like in this, seeing the world as an illusion, for me, it gives me peace. For somebody else, it might freak them out. Mm -hmm. And so it, we just have to know like, what are our tools? Mm -hmm. So- you know, for me, like, is there a purpose to the world? I, I believe that there's purpose for me in this world. I believe that I'm here to evolve as a spirit, but I don't actually need to evolve because I am a spark of source energy. I'm already mm. all the way evolved, but I'm playing a game. I'm mm. here. I've diminished myself into this teeny little tiny body, yeah. even though I'm this big, huge, infinite being. And I've decided that I want to play the video game. And mm. this is the route of the video game. Now, when I was a prostitute and a drug addict, you could not tell me that this world was an illusion because mm. I was so attached to my suffering and my victim mentality that this world is against me. And mm. that's all that there is. Mm. And, you know, that's where I was supposed to be at that time. Yes. And sometimes people just need to be where they're at. And yes. it's not necessarily, you know, obviously, like we have some tools and we want people to know the tools. So think about being in recovery, right? I am in a 12 step fellowship where I watch people constantly in a state of relapse oh, constantly yeah. now they see all of us that have like years in recovery that have a glow about us that are living beautiful lives that are abundant and full of community and love and spiritual principles and healing mm. and they see it it's right in their face we're right mm. next to each other and mm. they still don't get it and maybe they're not supposed to at the time. And I just have to live in the state of acceptance. Now, I yeah. want to shake these people and say, yeah. like, dude, there's a better way. You know, I work mm. in a clinic in Harlem. I work in a methadone program. Mm -hmm. And it's very challenging because I talk to active addiction all day long. Again, yeah. I want to shake these people. Like, oh guys, <laughs> yeah. it can be so much better. Like, start living your happy dream. It doesn't have to be a mm -hmm. nightmare. Like, yes, we live inside of a dream. We live inside of an illusion. But it's up to our thought forms what kind of dream it is. Mm. And do you want to be stuck in the roller coaster, the merry-go-round of the nightmare? Or are you ready to take a leap of faith and do something different? And, you know, it's programming. Oh. So if I think of myself as a computer, I am full of a system of codes, right? I have like these green lines of matrix code that make me up. Oh. Now, my code is programmed. It's stuck. It's cement. Oh. I have to start reprogramming it. And I can oh. only do it one little number at a time. I can, oh. you know, maybe when I get you know, like some speed in my life. Now I feel like I could take out a whole line of code at once and mm. start to reprogram it. But it's really about that process of reprogramming and you got to find the tools. For me, the 12 steps is a great tool to reprogram myself. And if you're yeah. not a drug addict or an alcoholic, too bad, you can't use them. Just kidding. <laughs> everybody has access yes. to the 12 steps. I mean, because everybody is addicted in some way or is affected by somebody who is addicted. And that's yeah. really what the 12 steps are about. Like you said, it's mm -hmm. trusting God, cleaning house, being of service. Like that's mm -hmm. it, you know? And there's a lot mm -hmm. of authors that have reworded the 12 steps in their own way. Gabrielle Bernstein comes to mind. Pick up one of her books, mm -hmm. start doing the inner work. She's such a great spiritual teacher. Mm -hmm. And um, and for me, A Course in Miracles was another great reprogramming tool. Again, yeah. this book reads like stereo instructions. It's totally insane. Mm -hmm. um, I recommend this book called A Course in Miracles Made Easy by Alan mm -hmm. Cohen. Mm -hmm. You know, like educating yourself is such a huge part of the reprogramming process. Like things mm -hmm. don't happen by osmosis. You can't just stand next to somebody and get their healing. I mean, maybe you could. I mean, it's an infinite universe. I guess anything is possible. <laughs> For me, I, I get a lot of joy out of doing the work today. Yeah. Again, when I was stuck in my last life, you could not have told me any of this stuff. In fact, when I think about a, a version of me 10 years ago and what she would think of this me, she's just like, you're a loser. <laughs> you're yeah. so lame. Like, <laughs> yeah. what are you talking about? People don't heal. And, um, and, you know, like I send compassion to that version of me because yeah. I, yeah, I, you know, so 
again, there's so many spiritual beliefs that can be weaponized. Like if somebody's really going through something, I'm not like, Hey, it's an illusion. Get over it. You know, I allow people to have their human experience. Like somebody in one of my spiritual communities just lost their father. And, you know, somebody like came off of mute and was like, well, you know, we go on infinitely and you can talk to him whenever you want and like throwing all this spiritual rhetoric at him. And it's like, no, dude, just let this guy grieve. Like he came here to be a human. Let him be human for a moment. He just Mm -hmm. lost his dad. doesn't matter that he's had a spiritual experience and he knows the other side. Like Mm -hmm. we are meant to experience the human part of being a human as well as the spiritual part. So my goal is not to be in spirit all day long. My goal Mm -hmm. is to use discernment, find my temperance and decide which situations call for a spiritual perspective and which situations I can just be human in. Like I am not perfect. I am, you know, innately flawed, just like everybody Mm -hmm. else. I have issues with control. I have issues with, (laughs) you know, I have a lot of control issues. So, you know, like I want things to go my way all the time. And that's me being a human, being in that defective character. You know, like some of them I hang on to for dear life. But when I can remember and like turn it over and just say, God, this is too big for me. You take this. Yeah. My life is so much more manageable. It really is. This is it. And it really is, isn't it? It's such a... And this is where sometimes when you talk about, and I hear it in meetings where people are like, oh, I just want to bash him with a big book. <laughs> I'm like, it's true. Sometimes you do. Or when you first come in, when I first came in and I, you know, got through the 12 steps and like, okay, now you can put your hands up. And honestly, I wanted to sponsor the world, you know, because you get that glow in, you know, the first 30 days, then 60, then 90, you kind of go, oh my God, I just want to kill the world. And then, and then over the years, you start to calm down and you settle into yourself and you do the healing work. But this is the beautiful thing about life itself is that all of the things that we experience and accomplish just opens up another door, you know? And I've sometimes I kind of just see it as just, you know, think yourself in, in a maze, you know, you're just opening a door today. I'm opening a door. I'm talking to Betty. And then the next day I'm going to be doing something else. And the next day I'm going to be doing something else. And, And every day there's this beautiful mystery. But as soon as you want to bash the door down and you want to kick the door, it won't open. You have to then just take that step back and just allow things to naturally unfold. Who is Betty today? Because you've got such an amazing story. And I'd love to kind of understand with everything that's happened, like who have you kind of encompassed yourself to? Like, you know, like if you could describe yourself in in what you do and what you would like to 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 accomplish in in days and moments to come, what would that be? Yeah, I just want to say I love the imagery of like, I just see you like opening a door, like poking your head and you're like, okay, done with this door. And then moving on to the next <laughs> yeah. one. I love that imagery. It just came into my mind so beautifully. Um, Yeah. Who am I today? I am this most authentic version of myself. You know, I have found vulnerability to be such a huge tool in my healing Mm. process. And so I put myself all the way out there, you know, Mm. and also because I believe it's an illusion. I'm like, who cares? It's not even real. Like I might as well just tell, (laughs) tell all the truth. Cause like, what's, what's the big deal? You know? Mm. Um, You know, I work as a coach, And I also work for the International Association for Near-Death Studies. Mm -hmm. I host a podcast for them on their YouTube channel, Mm -hmm. and I coordinate their webinars for their online space. So Mm -hmm. my life is just constantly surrounded by spiritual people that are in like different realms of spiritual awareness. Mm -hmm. And again, that tool of spiritual autonomy, everybody has their own spiritual path. And I, mm. and there's truth in all of them. Mm-hmm. It, it might not be my truth. It might not be the truth that I live my life by, but I love creating that space for experiencers, whether they've told their story a hundred times, or they've never told their story before, or they're just coming out of the spiritual closet after their experience happened 25 years ago. I think that for me, one of the main parts of my mission is to create that conscious space So I talk about my story very boldly and bravely because I know that it gives other people courage to share about theirs. Like every Mm. time that I do a podcast or I have a conversation or I work with somebody, they're able to give me a piece of themselves too. Mm. And Mm. I think that that's the greatest tool, that connection, that individual connection, that communal connection. Mm. I'm a big part of spiritual community. 
I study the Baha'i faith. I have a beautiful Baha'i community. If you're not mm -hmm. familiar with that, it's the world's youngest religion. And it mm -hmm. believes in the oneness of religion, the oneness of humanity and all manifestations of God. So everybody from Abraham to their prophet from the late 1800s, Baha'u'llah, and mm -hmm. they believe that there'll be more prophets in the future. And so mm -hmm. I really love the conception of that faith. Yeah. because it's so inclusive and it also mm. combines the conceptions of spirituality and science. Yeah. So I have a beautiful Baha'i community locally that I get to actually be around physical people <laughs> and oh, like touch nice. and hug and <laughs> yeah. sing and pray. And and then I also have, um, you know, like this community for near-death experiencers and spiritual experiencers with IONS, the International mm -hmm. Association for Near-Death Studies. And that's a virtual community. And we go to a conference every year together. And mm -hmm. from, and, and I also belong to 12-step fellowship. And I, yeah. and I have such a beautiful home group in my 12-step community, the mm -hmm. members of my soul family. I yeah. have found them. And yeah. they don't speak the same language as me. Not all of them do. Some of them no. do. Yeah. But, you know, like it's so beautiful just to be able to connect in a healing space around recovery yeah. and I have a beautiful course in miracles community. So my life is like, if I had to describe myself in one word, I would say community. Yeah. <laughs> because I am completely immersed in community and I can honestly tell you it has been the most uplifting tool on my healing journey to mm. be surrounded by other people, to have authentic, real connections where I can show every aspect of myself with these people. I don't have to compartmentalize myself. I can be my biggest, most authentic, true self in all of these spaces. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, my my tip to anybody would be like, find your space. If you, if you can't find it, reach out to me and I'll help shepherd you to some community that's yeah. meant for you. There you go. Amazing. Yeah. And I just want to ask one, two, two final things, actually. Um, how do you see the future of the world? Ooh, of I this illusion, that. although it's an illusion. Yeah, let's let's yeah. play the game. Let's play the game. I do believe that we will all wake up from this dream sometime in the very near future. Okay. A part of my download was that the Great Awakening is well underway. And it is on a timeline that is like towards its end timeline now. So I do mm -hmm. think that it will happen in the very near future. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's going to be a collective kick. Like we mm -hmm. will all wake up at the same mm -hmm. moment. And some mm -hmm. of us have already awoken to a certain degree and we're going to be there to help lift up the people who are just coming up into mm -hmm. the awakening in the moment. So yeah. I don't think that it's going to be fry, fire and brimstone or anything like that. I think yeah. that it will be a level up of consciousness that will mm -hmm. probably be a lot like a near-death experience, kind of like a white flash, mm -hmm. and then the ability to create your own experience, to have mm -hmm. the awareness that you can create your reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I keep seeing orbs going past here all the time. <laughs> this definitely is definitely powerful. What would be your your final message to to the audience? What would you like to leave them with today? Yeah, well, first of all, I just want to thank you for your sure for your contribution to the collective. And I'm looking forward to hearing about your miraculous healing and like you being this you. wonderful testimony that it actually <laughs> happens. I can Thank see you. the, I can see it. I can see, yeah, the little YouTube thumbnails. I can oh, see all the you. things. You know, I, I'm going to hold that vision with you. Oh, and you. Um, yeah, you know, I think the main message that I, I love leaving people with, number one, there's no such thing as condemnation. No matter mm. what you've done, you're mm. loved infinitely as a mm. spark of the divine. Mm. And that your thoughts really do shape your reality. If you can mm. change your thoughts, you can change your life. And if you can't, if you don't have the tools to change your thoughts, if you feel like you're really stuck in one in a one-track thought process, please reach out to me for support. Even if mm. I can't help you individually, I would love to connect you to community that can help you. Mm. And um, yeah, thank you so much for this space. I've had such a great time chatting with you. You yes. really definitely started my day off in the right direction. Good. Oh, I'm so glad. And where can people find you? Because I want everybody that listens to this to, 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 to find you. Yes, I'm on all social media. My username is Buddha Betty. It's a play on words. <laughs> and um, you can find me on all social media. I'm sure my links will be in the liner notes of this episode. Mm -hmm. And um, please feel free to connect. Yes, absolutely. Guys, honestly, this has been amazing. Thank you so much, Betty. Your energy just vibrates. And I really just continue to send you love and light and that you also keep shining. Because I think the more of us continue shining this big bright light people will see that it is possible 
it really is possible. It's not something that, you know, uh, a, a particular amount of people get given. We are the gods. We are gods. It's something that I found out the other day. This illusion that you're just this puny little human being and, and that you're nothing. That's a lie. You are a God and you're here to create and to have fun and to love and to have the good, the bad, the ugly. Because as we said, and as we know, you know, it is it is an illusion. But do allow yourself to have your experience when you're struggling, struggle, when you're shouting, shout, when you want to scream to the world, I love you shout I love you because we all do we all love each other unconditionally sometimes it's hard for us to show that to one another but whatever you do just keep shining and I will see you guys in the next episode take care thanks for listening and if you want to find out more about how you can overcome issues caused by mental health go to alexdesilva.co.uk that's www.alxda S-I-L-V-A dot C-O dot U-K. See you on the next one. Be great, be fantastic, and be absolutely phenomenal. Take care. <laughs>